So first of all, looking at this, these different tools, um, the, the key here is we have selected uh, uh, on one hand the, the most, most commonly used tools in business in general and also most commonly used uh, tool in, in context of um, Lean Startup and, uh, and uh, business, as business model canvas and also comparing that a little bit with Lean Canvas. And, uh, and these, are, these are tools, of course, mostly for, for the business as a whole, not only for the product, um, but it's important to start, start um, getting also the more holistic view from the whole business at the context of looking at the product as well. So as we have been moving from, from the, the, the company's purpose um, and the, the reason for existing to the point of what is the value that is going to be delivered on the market in the context of vision of the organization, now we are going into the, the actual business level of that and inside the business level, of course, leaves the actual product. So the reason we do things this way, of course, as, as we have covered in some of the earlier modules, is that, that products and services come and go and they are iterated, whereas the organization and business should last time and also be built along the way. And uh, the, the kind of um, not so thoughtful way of starting and more of it if it's just like, okay, let's see if this idea flies type of approach, which then leads a lot of uh, ideas dying and also a lot of startups dying. Uh, approach doesn't really take that kind of approach into account. So it's more about just looking at putting idea out there, putting product out there and then seeing if that works, then we will build the organization. But if we look at any of the, the kind of meaningful organizations that survive, the organizations and the people are there and the mission and uh, they, they all remain while the products change. So even from that perspective, it's quite logical to, to, to look at all these aspects from this perspective, in what context the product should live. But uh, again, this is just the approach where we want to cover the, the whole, whole uh, aspects from these perspectives, because when the organization and the bigger context are afterthought of a product, this is a, a, a big of the, the kind of reason for, for also this uh, main failure factor, which is the premature scaling. Going too far with the product without having all the other things even considered well enough. Okay, with that, that uh, kind of summary from the, from the previous things, uh, let's, let's dive into looking at some of these tools a little bit uh, in more detail. So SWOT, uh, of course, this is, this is a, a typical quick, also very quick analysis tool to, to evaluate basically where we are today. And this is something that can be repeated uh, even in, in the beginning when there's a lot of learning and, and a lot of activities happening and the organization is structuring, or at least if you consider the development phases from minus two to to one, uh, or minus one to zero, to one to two to three, it's each step of the way you could update your SWOT analysis just to kind of uh, document the, the, the things that you have find in each of these columns. So, of course, this is uh, just a, a bullet point type of approach to document the strengths, uh, document the key opportunities, let's say maximum five a maximum 10, list of 10, minimum something like five bullet points to keep track of, of each of these elements about the organization as a, as a, as a whole. Looking at team, looking at uh, the market, looking at that uh, holistic perspective of, of, of the whole company and organization. Of course, you can also, if you want, you can apply this uh, into any sub-segment with, with additional bullet points. But the main point is really to have this kind of quick snapshot view into, into what we have um, and, and, and identify them, document them and look at them together and then work with them. And let's, let's basically then, it, 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 it can be as, as this simple, um, 
maybe a bit bigger um, boxes to include those up to 10 points in each. And, um, and uh, also uh, be really honest about, this is an internal document, this is an internal tool, so it's very good to be very honest in, in documenting this information because that way they are more identified and even getting feedback from others or when you're doing pitching and things like that and the questions or concerns or uh, perspectives raised by others then you can you can put them there and, and then you can work on them. So to, to go to the next phase of just documenting them then you can start to apply this and then work this more a bit like a tool so you can look at um, the, the strengths slash opportunities uh, match them, cross match them and look at how can you use your strengths to really go after the opportunities uh, in, in different aspects. And these are also documenting these and uh, for the future and the future product features and future iterations. So it's not that everything needs to go in now because this is uh, more of the, of, the, of the whole market and, and the business as a whole. The same, same way you can then look at how do you apply your strengths to reduce the likelihood of the threats or risks um, kind of coming to life. So how do you protect, uh, try to protect strategies so you can write down some of the thoughts and strategies, how you're going to apply your strengths to try to reduce the threats. And then working from there, you can then also look at um, <coughs> how can you overcome the, the weaknesses um, that prevent us from taking advantage of these opportunities. So basically it is how to develop, uh, how to build more team members, how to educate yourself, um, how to find certain types of resources or whatever those may be through partnerships or, or whatnot. To, to basically uh, work over time uh, uh, in, in kind of getting stronger to be able to pursue those opportunities. And again, writing this in a, in a separate, separate uh, uh, column. We actually have a, a Google spreadsheet about this that automatically kind of creates these fields and you can, you can more easily see see the, 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 the things written down and actually this is a resource a reminder for you Oscar helping me here that that that, that we, we should actually share as well and then also looking at uh, weaknesses and threats so how can we address uh, the weaknesses that um, that the threats don't become a reality so it's really cross-matching these simple bullet points, looking them side by side, and then coming up with uh, tactics and strategies and, and thoughts and ideas uh, for future to feed on, on things. And as you can imagine, once you do this exercise, if you sit down with your team, you sit for one hour, you do this exercise, let's say in the beginning, uh, once you hit it, sort of the milestones, or, or let's say, a monthly basis or something like that, then 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 you will this will help you to to see your your business and and also see your progress and, and your thought process developing uh, along the way. So then let's look at uh, the business plan as a tool and uh, as as probably you may have come across. There's a, a strong tendency, if even for specifically a lot of the Silicon Valley types of VCs and, and, and investors saying that, well, you don't need a business plan, business plan is for nonsense and so forth. And, and the, the key here is that, that there's a certain truth for that, for sure. Uh, I've also seen a lot of those kind of uh, startups that come from perhaps sometimes in a typical corporate world uh, learnings and not so much of, of entrepreneurial experience, uh, writing this very long theoretical business plan that is full of unvalidated things. So if it's all based on such theories and, and none of those actually have been tested in the markets, 
then the whole business plan is basically useless. Uh, so the key with the business plan is when it is relevant, at what point, and, and, uh, and also why so. And if we look at the business plan structurally, it is like this big long document that just piles you know, assumptions on top of more assumptions that where the base assumptions are not validated. Uh, but because of the format of the document, it becomes very difficult and, and complex to, to, to iterate. So the reality is that business plan definitely is a valuable tool and it's often even mandatory for some grants or a specifically lending type of uh, funding. But it's not applicable at this development phase. So it is applicable in the later phase. And that's where it become, actually becomes a useful tool. So we'll focus on that later on also in more detail, but not in, in this module. 